Yeah, uh, or to that game rather. It could be the case if Alliance should win the previous match, which is ongoing right now against Navi. And as far as DK goes, yeah, I think we've pretty much covered everything now. But there's yep. a lot of, lot of things to keep track of right now. Let, let's focus directly it. on the game at hand. Yes. It all comes into a best of one still at the end of the day. Enigma and Razor, the first two bands out here from DK going up against EG, while uh, EG will take out the Lycan and Shadow Shaman. So Shadow Shaman, very high, uh, high prioritizing as far as his banding goes, and EG, while Tinker and Beastmaster. What makes you feel a little fanaticish, doesn't it? That's the. There's been a couple of teams running this over over the years, and it's a classic combination. Of course, what you're playing around with is Beastmaster's Hawk, giving great vision, and the fact that you can boots of travel on it. So you basically, Tinker turns into like a drop pod. He can go anywhere on the map. He since he can TP on a unit, and Beastmaster can choose the. Um, the target location so it's a, these these two heroes have great synergy uh, in addition to that Beastmaster is a great setup with the primal raw for Tinker to go in and burst down the target with laser rocket and especially uh, ethereal blade when he which he gets later on yep um, and it's a good a decent solution to brewmaster primal raw is a long disable that you can get on the brew so he can't use his primal split so so far so good for EG and another thing is they will probably offlane the Beastmaster and that's just quite a lot better on the Radiant. It's actually one of the few heroes that doesn't have anything to distort the creep equilibrium with that I would say is okay on the Dire, as long as you can stack the Ancients, but in this caliber of a match, that would probably be locked. Yep. Oh, it, it definitely should be, man. It definitely should be. Uh, DK, I'm, I'm kind of liking, I'm kind of liking the Lion pickup. I wish I could saw a little bit more Lion throughout the competition. Uh, and actually, one thing I do also want to comment time. before we actually wrap this one up, uh, there were, uh, before we wrap this up, what am I talking about? Um, it's over, guys. <laughs> that we're actually seeing a, a retiring player. Yeah, uh, I've heard this a lot of times before. It's true, it's true, we have heard this before as well. But You if, never really leave Dota. If this really Ten is Lanham's last remaining. event, I will shed a tear. Lanham was always one of my remaining. favorite players. No, I don't know if I believe him. <laughs> it's like, just, I'm it's, not sure if I, I don't know if I believe you it. You think he's going for sympathy vote? It's just like, no, I'm, I'm well. going, it's like, it's like, I'm going to die. All right, so just support me. Oh, I'm not going to die anymore. Right, it's okay. It's I've okay. just lost, I've, I've lost track York. of how many Chinese players have retired and then come back. I think it's happened quite a lot of times. But if it is true, I'm not going to say he will definitely come back. So if it happens, of course, would love to see DK get a good result in this tournament for that reason, for him to end on a high note. Um, but let's let's just see if it actually happens. Of course, it has been announced. So I mean, it's it's not it just has. speculations. He's actually said it himself. Come back out now. <laughs> yes. Um. Well, I'll look forward to it anyway. Uh, it should be uh, well, maybe his line. Uh, we could look to come out, but right now uh, we are getting through our second part of the banning stage. And they ban out the bat rider, so they start to look towards uh, ice 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 as heroes here. Eg. Considering the Brewmaster's already picked up, we kind of know Mushi is on the back of that one. So, there's Burning and Ice 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 Heroes. You've already got one support, Reserve and, time. well, what else would you take out? Right right now, I would flag Storm Spirit Clockwork up pretty damn high. Clockwork, I think, is a good pick so far. I would agree. That could be uh, a nice solution to the Tinker. At least they need some sort of solution to the Tinker. We've seen Tinkers winning so many games where they just get out of control. The best counter picks that come to mind for me are heroes like Clockwork who can jump in from afar, Storm in yep. the same category, uh, invisible heroes that catch Tinker off guard somewhere on the map like Ricky Maru, uh, Bounty Hunter, right. Nyx is a great counter. Yeah, Bounty Hunter still hasn't been picked in the entire top competition. And who hasn't? Bounty Hunter. Bounty, yeah. He hasn't, hasn't been picked pick. once. No. And there's, there's one more that's eluding me right now, Clinks with Orchid, is okay. a great pick as well. So, we'll see if DKM for any of that. We've seen Burning playing Clinks a lot in the past with Orchids, and they're actually banning Storm themselves, which yeah. I find really interesting. They already have a Lion. The enemy team already has a Tinker. I wonder if they try Five and battle their own split I wonder if pick it, up like a Nature's Prophet here or something like that. I wonder if they thought it was their turn to pick. <laughs> no! <Reserve time. laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, I'm guilty. It's happened I, uh, for me before. I, I doubt that I'm <laughs> making that kind of mistake. <laughs> it's happened um, for me before. There's also actually something else which uh, I don't think I've actually touched on at all in any of the cards I've had of DK. Uh, but DK actually switched the person who's doing the drafting. Yeah, it's Lanham. Yep. So initially on day one, uh, I think it was actually Mushi or Burning that was doing it was the drafting. Burning. Yeah. It was Burning doing the draft on day one. So they basically changed it over to Lanham to give themselves a little bit more, I don't know, like something which is harder to read. Either way, I think Lanham across over the course of DK's 
career as a team over the last months, Lanham's drafts might have been the most stable and most successful overall. So it could have just been 71, the team's manager, that said, okay guys, listen, we're under the gun, so much pressure's on right now, get your most experienced drafter in, get something a little bit out of the box, but that you still know works. Like yesterday, we saw them running a Tusk Undying game, which was absolutely fantastic to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I mean, this time around, a Lion's second pick is also fairly unusual. I think Lanham is not afraid of getting something he thinks is good that isn't necessarily Boom! prioritized that high. Called it. <laughs> and this is another pick against Tinker. They counter each other, yeah. by the way. Prophet and Tinker are both extremely mobile and can port around the map. Th this is the reason for the storm band. This yes, is the reason that's for a good point. Band. But then it's a little weird that they used that much time on picking up the Prophet then. If sure. that's what they wanted, they should have kind of known. I, but maybe they were discussing whether they wanted it now or on the next. Or, yeah, yeah, I think that would be the one thing they'll go down to. She just to, to go back to something which she said, like, like the coach could have actually said that. You actually know, um, like the, so we did an interview with all the coaches who were here for the event. And uh, one thing that was said was the DK Five coach actually doesn't even play Dota 2. Doesn't touch the game. He just sits there Reserve and he's basically time. like, all right, boys, what do you need? I'll get you this. So he like finds all the details and basically is a runaround guy. Which coach? Uh, the coach of DK. DK 71. Team DK's turn to I believe so. 71 has been a coach in Dota 1 as well for a very long time. I thought he was actually an ex-player and had a lot of experience. I could be wrong. I, he's not an ex-player, I don't think. I, I, I call it, I, according to one of the guys on the interview, I, I think it was Fear who was the one who said it. Okay, um, that's surprising. Yeah, I might have to go rewatch that one again, I mean, but th there was the words basically said that the DK coach actually isn't a professional player. That can, be never both, was. that can be both good and bad, because you can get a different perspective, and actually if he has no insight into the game, he can focus on all the other things like mentality, team spirit, um, just overall experience and stuff like that, and, ju mm -hmm. uh, and just do stats, like be like, He's okay guys, time. when you had this drafter, you did this and this, and it, I feel like it went better, maybe you should consider it, yep. so that his perspective, since he's not into the game at all, can actually be really refreshing for the team. So yeah. it's it's both good and bad. I think it's it's a little hard to say. I'm I'm surprised with that. That's kind of interesting. Ah. But faceless voice back again, man. Yeah, faceless voice back again. But, what a uh, surprise! So with EG, uh, normally it's been Universe that's the one who's been playing the faceless void in this one. So we won't. We'll see Mason for his Marana, and if that's the case, we're missing. Oh, not again! Not again! Oh, see, I've seen this before. It could be a core. Uh, you're right, it could be. If it's a support juggernaut, I am not feeling it here. I don't understand the reasoning so far. But the funny thing is, Ten if it works this time around, like this is the third time they would do it if, if, uh, Actually, for my broadcast. It worked the first time, it failed horrendously the second time. That was the Brazilian match. Uh, and then the third time, which is now, who knows, maybe it can work. No, it it finally worked see it twice. Work. They're two it and did? one with juggernaut, I think. They that. are? The one thing that's really good against about Juggernaut here is that Healing Ward is amazing at sieging into Tinker. So mm. you can actually heal up the march and keep your push going. And who's really going to take that out? Are you going to set a ball down? That, yeah, the ball can do it. Void can commit and kill it. Maybe Marana can get a single attack off and leap out. But if you play it well with the Healing Ward, it's, it could definitely work out here. As far as roaming power, Juggernaut and Lion together as a duo are actually really good when Lion is level 2. Mm -hmm. Or even on level one, now that Hex lasts two and a half seconds, that's two and a half seconds of Blade Fury that you can't escape from, so... Yeah. I could see it Technically, working. actually, what can control Juggernaut now apart from... Chronosphere and Roar. Yeah, that's it. But that's it, a lot. <laughs> and, and in like the early stages, you spin... Uh, that's true. But the right. ball is slow, it doesn't go through the immunity, does it? It does. It does? Yeah. Alright, so you, what, you can get slowed by that, but... Remaining. Whenever I've seen Lanham go around with this Juggernaut, he's normally Five gone like boots very, remaining. like very early. It's boots first. It's highly situational. I love the last band from EG, by the way. They're analyzing the situation similar to me here that DK can actually start pushing pretty early on with Brewmaster split, Treant's healing ward. At so they ban out time, the Pugna, who had also been a great counter to Tinker, who used so much mana in the fights, and the Nether Ward's just going to kill him off. At the same time, it opens up to like bigger pushes. Like Krob is still there. <laughs> you still got the Lone Druid available. Uh, you got a lot of these things there. Do you remember the game against Vici for DK, where they got crushed in 15 minutes? Yeah. Do you remember what hero was, ruined it for? Yeah, them? it was the SD. <laughs> he just got last banned. But <laughs> it's going to be a Bane instead here for EG, so getting the setup for the arrow. Hmm. It, this kind of looks like so it's going to be a support beast master. They've done that, I think, as well. Probably going to be played by Zai, who tends to play their greedy support. And PPD is an amazing Bane. So, well-rounded lineup for EG. They've got great late game with Void and Tinker. They've got good mid game with high initiation power ultimates like Raw and Grip. And as far as the early game goes, Bane Marana always fearful to play against. 
Beastmaster, not so scary early on. So perhaps DK can actually start sieging remaining. towers fast. And I think that's the approach they should take here. I could even see them last picking another pusher. Like, even Death Prophet now wouldn't be too remaining. bad. Just make sure you take control of the game awesome. early on. Or Way! Level 1! One... <laughs> I haven't had one of these. I haven't had one of these. I now, I'd ask you the question, who would have the better level 1 fight right now, EG or DK? If they try and fight it, and I'm going to say, like, take, take into consideration, who would win the fight if DK is baiting the Roshan? So they don't have any damage taken by Roshan, they're baiting EG to respond. Who would win the fight? Um... um one team will win. <laughs> Thanks, Send. Thanks. That's actually really hard to call. March is amazing in the Rosh Pit, uh, which I'm assuming our TZ will skill if we have a level 1 fight. Void is awful. Pro is great. Axes are great. Ten Bane remaining. will maybe skill Brain Sap if they take that fight. That's a 90 pure damage nuke. Yep. As for Five DK, Juggernaut Spin is perhaps the best level 1 ability in the game just as far as da damage goes. Um, clap from Brew is okay. Line with a hex level one will set up the juggernaut. And the trance uh, should actually not be underestimated, but this is I not a level know. one Roshan. I don't even know if they want to go for this it. This is not a level one Roshan. They're, they're not confident that they're gonna win the fight. But look instantly at EG. They are taking no chance with this whatsoever. The lineup basically flags so heavily it's a level one Roshan, but EG they smoke out and they're moving so quickly. It's, it's almost like they're moving as if DK have, have uh, TP to the T1 towers and try and take Roshan. That's what the are feels around. like, but look at... Well, the movement's not going to find anyone until they rotate up north. It's and the arrow funny. scouts, nothing is there. They are not even near there. It's funny that DK aren't expecting EG to check Roche. <laughs> well, maybe they are. Maybe they are. And what they do is they try and get themselves up to this point. There's so absolutely no way this works, walks DK. Come on. There. If this works, that's absolutely <laughs> legendary. If someone walks up here now... <laughs> There's a little tree doing the scouting. He's around the corner, so the tree sits in the edge, they're smoked Oh up, my god, and it they're might have just universe. work. Oh no, he, made, he came down! He came... He yeah, there's a, a ping, there's a ping. He placed a ward behind the tower, and actually flagged his positioning, but look where the Radiant Observer ward is right now. It's right on top of the DK lineup, right next to the ancient area. They'll de-ward it out. I can't if I'm wrong too, this ward will actually block up the camp. I think Mushi's gonna be like, it's okay guys, we didn't get Roche, but I got an Observer Ward, it's pretty much the, the same. 50 begins. gold, man! 50 gold! And Huge. looking over at the net worth graph, it's not showing! There we go, 50 gold lead for DK. Massive. I already won okay, the game. It's, just, it's an advantage from the first minute, man. They have a really significant gold advantage, they've got like 50% more gold than EG at this point. I, I know my analysis is out of this world. Ah, uh, that's the Our reason why you get paid the big bucks, man. In the mid lane, so we'll be very mobile here. I guess it's a way for him to uh, deal with the fact that there's probably going to be a juggernaut coming in and roaming. So he wants to just be faster, or at least as fast as the juggernaut here with the boots. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Burning, however, get got off the better block, so he'll be starting on his cliff. And actually, I guess we should introduce the lanes for both teams. So let's quickly look at EG first. In the top lane, it's going to be Universe playing as the Beastmaster. Mid lane, Arteezy on his ever faithful Tinker, and on the bottom lane, Tri lane from EG, Zai, Mirana, PPD on the Bane, and finally Mason will be playing as Faceless Void. Yeah, an nice size size down here. It looks like a top lane universe is still a crap ton of damage, but yeah, Mushi, Mushi on the Fuzzy Wuzzy will have MMY uh, coming in as a three headed lion. We'll have uh, Burning as the Brewmaster in the middle lane, and really, I'm already wanting to applaud Ice Ice Ice's play. He's been blocking up this camp with Triants, making making EG think that it's just the Triants causing them the problems. Uh, they actually have no sentry wards on these two supports, but it's this ward that's just down to the side. Are you sure that blocks? I'm almost certain that blocks. Almost. Like, okay. we'll wait for the two minute mark to see if, uh, to see if it does block it up, but I'm fairly certain it does. Yeah. Ice says Ice gave up on that lane now, though. I think he's gonna go jungle. He's got two clarities in his inventory. We'll probably rotate in. And I think it's the better call at this point as well. If that ward does indeed block, he can start jungling, and he won't be afraid of the supports outleveling him, and at the same time, EG's pushing power in this bottom lane is pretty abysmal. They can't take the tower that fast, but considering that he actually managed to make them push already, he'll head down to the bottom lane, since they're, they, the equilibrium is going in his favor. So, this is a little bit surprising for me that he managed to accomplish that. Mason will do whatever he can to negate the damage done, but this is still a full level going the way of Ice 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 in the lane, and then he can just TP into the jungle and farm. We haven't touched on one thing yet. Lanham. 
But this Juggernaut still needs to find levels. I have seen a game in which he didn't, and it was not good. I saw a game which he did, and he even got first blood. That's a good game. He's, okay, this will give him close to level 2. Very, very close to level 2. And they could just add more pressure towards the top lane. Because that's one thing which we kind of haven't really considered as well. Like, level 1 Roshan was always a potential for DK. But when you throw in, like, a level 2 healing ward, Mushi can go in there without having to have a Vladimir's offering and get a very early kill out, out in Roshan. And then they can give the space to MMY, he can grab his level 6, or they can give it to Juggernaut in the safe lane. Like, the potential for a lane rotation to come out by, like, 5-7 minutes into this game is really, really high. The fact you've already got two levels up in the trees on each is proper too means if they get a kill on this top lane, the T1 tower is gone. Because they can just bring it down straight away. And a little bit surprising in addition to that, it's actually going very well for DK. Burning is is beating Arteezy fairly handily here in the mid lane. Actually, he's 18 and 6 against the 9 and 1 Tinker. Very impressive play from Brewmaster. I would say this is a lane Arteezy will generally win or at least draw, but Burning has just beaten him on mechanics so far. EG's coming to help him out. They realize the problem as well, so Zai as well as PPD are smoke rotating in towards that mid lane searching for the for the Brewmaster. He might be he's playing it really defensively right now, so might not be caught out. And I don't even know if they can kill him to be honest. If if they get the long five second arrow, then I think they can. I'm still not sure. Actually, look, look, look at the skill build from from Martizi, or I should say the lack of skill build from Martizi. Yeah, he's, he's got waiting. one point laser, he's got five points up. Which means there's four un unspent uh, ability points right yeah. now. So he's deciding what he wants. All he really wants in the lane and needs in the lane is 100% mischance on the Brewmaster's attacks. And that you get from level 1 laser anyway. Yeah, this is a very classic thing for Tinkers to do that haven't Top made up just yet. Yeah. They're coming in for Universe. Ice, Ice, Ice. This is the, this is the two levels of trees. I thought they'd look for a kill Radiant first before they attempted this. Because uh, they're not going to get in range. But there's a level 1 healing board which Lanham still hasn't put down just yet. Uh... And there it goes. Now they'll force the tower. Did you see that sprout? No. But I was I wasn't looking for it. I saw the summer to the, the summer trees. It's pretty on. Oh. Nevertheless, they're going to be uh, forcing down this tower. I don't know whether EG can hold. They're doing whatever they can with the axis here from Universe. Actually pulling the entire wave away. And it might just be enough. Uh, they still got the healing ward up, which means no, the heroes can tank up a hell of a lot more. So, good start for DK. They strike first. The Juggernaut pick so far with that healing ward has been useful this time around. Wouldn't be surprised he's, to he's see a smoke level two come spin, out man. He could start stacking and also farming. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's the call though. I think he's going to smoke with MMY now, and they'll try to rotate into mid and kill off our TZ if possible. Mm. Burning, however, does not have the best lane position right now to gank mid. He would like it to be on his cliff before they go for a play like that. But yeah, you're right. He's actually just going to stack. Yeah. Or farm the stack rather. He's, he's, he's waiting until he's got the healing ward up and running because he knows the spin won't be enough to get through this this wave. I think they'll just pull down the creeps and then let them tank for him. Okay, yeah, that could work. I think it's a better call. His mana is pretty important right now. He doesn't want to waste it on, on just farming if he can avoid it. I think he's still going to have to... Oh, they missed the connection on two right, of the they only, only grabbed half It's of probably it. still enough, actually. No, they're going to ignore it. Roshan's being done right now by Mushi and Ice Ice Ice. Bernie's going to give him some cover fly, but the fact we've got heroes missing for the lane, this has to flag for EG that something is awry. But it's just Mushi with just a casual, like, casual morbid mask. And that's not. I've got this arrow available so we can throw it out if he wants to. But burning with split, they know they've got enough chaos so they can control it. And there you go, healing ward is up. So the Mauler Mark is just enough. This is what I was talking like talking about very early on. Six like five or seven minutes in, you can just rotate the hero out, you get your Angus Immortal, and it's MMY that soaks up experience on the top lane, looking for that quick level six. Which means finger of death, Bane's gonna have a really rough time trying to get that thing off, including Mirana as well. Both are very susceptible to that very high burst damage early on. Yeah, Moosh is looking very good in this game so far. That's one thing that's for damn sure. 34 CS, Roshan kill level 5. His counterpart, Mason, is actually level 7 in the safe lane. Went for a very quick Midas, has 45 CS, so excellent farm coming out from Mason as well. But he's pretty much been playing 1 on 0. So that bottom lane is just a free farm lane, and we'll see how he can... You transform that farm into value later on for his team. Just gonna point out value wise, again, I know I flagged this for you yesterday morning when we had that game. Oh hello bottom lane. Oh there's, there's the your value. Partner. This I don't know if this will be yeah, it will be first blood. With rain sap, ice ice ice, he sprouts himself but can't protect protect himself from that last attack. And Mason also had a quelling blade so he can get through. So first blood goes the way of EG. 
but I want to talk about the support. So before that fight happens, I actually didn't have two and a half levels. He's like two and one third. Uh, but the levels of the supports, Juggernaut's still above that of the Marana. Effectiveness-wise, he's approaching level four. And Lion is almost level 6. MMY is yep. actually getting a lot of space. They're letting him solo farm top right now. And a finger of death early on can be crucial in shutting down the Tinker in particular. He's still the hero I'm looking for for DK to deal with. Artesia has maxed out March. His jungle has been stacked as well. He's actually finding a lot of farm. And it's a mid yeah. push. I, I don't think they can push this. The March is ready. Pro Healing ward for Juggernaut is only level 1. They're going to search for kills. Look where Mushi and Lanham are moving. Like the Hawks are doing some scouting as well. They're really trying to watch for the flank of DK. And they're going to block the ancients. Okay. And kill the Hawk. <laughs> DK this making just, sure there's this no is not, This is not happening for DK. RTC with the skill build is able to easily defend that tower. He's still pretty far away from the... From the boots of travel, though, that's the good news for DK. RTC has another 900 gold to go. They've managed to block the ancients. Our, uh, Ice 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 is blocking this camp with a treant right now. The other camps are not stacked. Oh, what are you doing, man? Getting really aggressive, and Ice 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 will TP himself in. While up on the high ground, burning, he's still waiting for the jump in moment. But with a healing ward behind him with this push, as a level one healing ward only, he actually went crit for his uh, for his next uh, uh, ability here, Juggernaut. But they've got the T1 tower down. EG don't really seem to show any desire to fight this at all. With no Chrono, I don't think they could even attempt it. EG needs to be careful not to concede too many towers for, for nothing here. They've already lost two towers at nine minutes. The bottom lane tower is probably the next one DK will be looking for. And they're going to have to TP down and defend. Mason is getting a good trade-off right now. Getting a really good farm in the bottom lane, pushing... Getting about half the damage on the tier 1 tower down there, and we'll now be backing off since the rotations are coming in. Ice 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 has reached level 6, by the way, so... Wrath of Nature is now available for Global Ganking, and Lion, oh, almost level 7 on MMY, they're giving him a lot of space, and I love it. I think Lion with Great Farm is very, very useful in games of this type. Damn. Damn. It's a great farm. He's about to get a blink tanker once they bring down this bottom yeah. tower. They give him the last hit. They've got a 9 minute initiation coming out from a Lion. In fact, Burning is the one to pick up the first set of Arcanes. Juggernaut is also at a point where he can buy... Bottom she... tower is under attack. I assume M uh, Lanham's going to subscribe to his old build from before, where he just rushes Agadims. No, he doesn't wait for anything attack. else. He'll buy the point boost and next and just rush the Agadims. And the only thing he's meant to be doing is just throwing out his ultimate. The difference is, though, like, the combination which I saw before with the Juggernaut, Radiance it was always with the Faceless Void. Attack. It wasn't with a hero like Ursa. It was Faceless Void he was searching for. Speaking of Void, he could walk into a death trap here. MMY, as well as... Okay. He's got no jump. I'm not sure who's getting trapped. <laughs> so if if Void jumps, he could potentially kill it. Bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower uh, is under if, attack. If there's hawks Weird. around for that kind of thing, which there was, then it would actually be a death trap for DK. Because the Void Crona will come, and then Arteezy would just TP himself in and provide the burst damage required to kill the lion. Which means Finger of Death will never ever be cast. This is this is kind of like what DK had to also be prepared for. That their vision is really, really limited because you're not going to be sprouting random areas of trees trying to find out where the hawk is. Like you might do that when you when you get into a point where you know when the where the, where the attack is going to happen. But when you're just looking around someone's jungle for a potential gank, you're not going to be doing that. And now three man smoke movement from DK. If you'll actually have Mushi on the bottom lane, and Ice 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 will TP him back behind the tower. So if this T1 tower belongs to DK again, this will be 11 minutes and all out of T1 towers are gone. Mushi gets the last hit. Aw, Mason! Now they found him. They found him. But Juggernaut, he's got, he just got no level 6. Mason jumps away and Zaya's arrow will reveal the fact that DK aren't following. The smoke gank didn't work out, but they still claimed the tower. And the question is, when do EG start accomplishing some, something? They've got one kill so far. They got the first blood in the bottom lane on Ice Ice Ice, but they haven't found any towers. They're finding great farm on Void and Tinker, but they can't afford to lose more map control. Even with the B Master Tinker line lineup, that's pretty good at getting out on the map. They, they're gonna get cornered I pretty should... soon if this continues. Now Ice 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 with the minus pickup. I'm surprised that EG aren't even trying to defend this tower, to be honest. You know, it's, it's very, very similar to our IG DK match. VG DK? Uh, VG DK match. Very, very similar. You realize the early pushing potential coming out from DK is just so much that you're like, well, we'll, we'll accept the casualties, we'll accept the towers will go down, 
and then just have confidence that you can push back at some point. Because yeah, at this point, 12 minutes in, you're not going to be able to fight through a full Aegis D mortal. So you've got to attack. accept the fact that that's going to be there. You can't, you've got to kill Mushi off twice. You don't really have the Dyer's firepower in order to do that. So you just try and find the better trade-offs that you can get. And attack. the one thing which I think EG has working for them, which we didn't see previously, is the fact that the Beastmaster Hawk will still allow the Tinker to freely move into very forward positions in the lanes. And this can make DK fall back and work behind him. Like you see Arteezy now up on the top lane. He's only a thousand or so gold away from having his Blink Dagger, and these can be a lot more self-reliant. EG are basically trading experience for gold right now. They have 3k experience lead at the cost of 3,500 gold, but you know, that sounds like a fairly even down, that's trade. Okay. The problem is that Dyer's they're trading experience for gold and map control, which I think is is not a good enough trade. They're they're doing a good job at finding what they can, but when DK pick up a gem and they start dewarding this and they start split pushing out the lanes, I think EG could have a problem. Even though they have Tinker and Beastmaster, which are arguably maybe even the kings of split push together, there's still a profit on the enemy team who could do s something similar. And in addition to that, DK just have so many options for running skirmishes. Lion plus any other hero is a kill. Lion plus Juggernaut, Lion plus Brew, especially Lion plus Ursa will just maul down anyone in, within a matter of two seconds, even a half second if they actually want. Impale Finger of Death and Overpower, <laughs> someone just dies, right? What so. is Mushi buying? Because he can complete the full Vlads right now. I got a funny feeling, he's going for a different item. He might be going straight into... No, BKB is pretty awful this game, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's I'm wondering against looks, Tinker. I wonder if he just looks for uh, like a higher source of damage. Remember, that, like the orb effects now work very differently on Ursa, so his his uh, his options are a lot more open. Well, if he wants something else than life steal, he has to finish the leads or sell his or never mind. If it over, forget it. If it procs together with life steal, then it's gonna be bad. Jump up! Oh. They found one. Zai munched. Universe put the roar up. Oh early. wow! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> the roar pushed him up on the cliff. Luckily, he's got a blink tag, but he blinked himself in, but the raw pushed him out. Burning's got to feel cheated there. That's just really <laughs> unfortunate. They could have actually got the Beastmaster as well. If that raw didn't knock him up there, Burning could have uh, could have got off the raw, uh, the split and just finished Universe off. But that looked really cool. He managed to actually to salvage that. They only lose Lanham, one hero. Top lane, Lana's PPD really is holding him in position right now. That's where the Fiend's Grip lays a rock. It's Lanham. He lets the ulti go. And then why? Oh, what an kills the Impal picked up two and PPD getting cramped by the Brewmaster. A great fight there for DK. Wow, that Impale. I can't believe that hit both of them. I thought that was for sure only going to hit the Bane, but Clips Artis just on the edge. He's been trading with Angelina Jolie, man. He can and make that Impale stand corners. It's wonderful. Really well played here by DK. They're looking to start off the day in a strong manner. 5,000 gold ahead at this point. The experience is now down to zero. Look at those two, Mush three kills they just Mushi's got. Mushi's rushing Scardi. Oh, really? Mushi is rushing. He's got an Onslaught coming out in the Curry to him right now. I doubt he's building Lincoln Sphere in this game because that makes no sense whatsoever. Mana style would also not make a lot of sense. Dyer's middle tower. He's just going straight for Scardi. It's very rare for me to see EG in this type of game where they. EG is generally a very aggressive team that love going out and finding pickoffs, and they have the heroes for it, but DK aren't giving them any space. They've taken the towers, map control, two Roshans. Look at the experience. Like, I want to point out those last three kills were worth 3k experience combined, and then they get Roche afterwards. The gold, now more than 7k, or about 7k in the favor of, um, of DK at this point. And I don't know about that ulti orb. I'm not sure it's Iskadi, to be honest. Uh, what else What else would it be, man? It could be a Mansa to break the laser. Mm, which, eh, it's kind of meh. Yeah. Lincoln's is an option, but I also think that's not too good. No, because uh, there's too many things to go through it anyway. Does Mushi have anything? He's buying the Vlads now. So he's holding his... Um, he hasn't made his decision just yet for that. Or maybe he has, but we I, don't know. We I, can't I'm, tell you. I'm fairly certain he's just thinking, you know, I just want to pick up my Scardi right now. I jump in. And you think about it. With the amount of life points you're going to have from the Scardi, the ability you have for control, whoa, 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 that's easy. He was TPing out then, and he blinked himself. That views the Moonlight Shadow, the dust. It was in range, so Arteezy is revealed from that. Yeah, but they're too far away now. Another possible attack. choice for Mushi here is to get Radiant's a Scythe of Vice. But I think if that was attack. what he was looking for, they already have Hex on Lion, as well as Pale. Yeah. I think he would rather go Oh, for nice for Mason. The Hawk count scattered it out. However, the Prophet Ultimate will not make this easy. Oh, that's a lot of ultimates, but they want to secure Juggernaut. that kill. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, Zai got himself away. Ladam's too deep. He's going to spin, but doesn't matter for Void. Okay. Two kills to EG. 
Uh, he thought he was going to get Sai, didn't, and ends up conceding a pretty much a free feed here to to the faceless void. But to go back on what I was talking about, Hex is an Top option lane. for Mushi, but I, I still I, think Abyssal is being hunted choice. by animals. The rockets and uh, TZ, okay, with no. his mana. Like, he, he came in with like half mana. <laughs> He knew he wasn't going to get that kill. He's just map controlling at this point, Arteezy. Putting pressure... ...and pushing out the lanes the best he can. Mushi still can mid. He knows Mason has no chrono. An MMI with a oh, blink dagger. Mason. He guns him, he gets the stun. No backtrack on the finger of death. <laughs> okay. Middle is high. Lana, by the way, is also 500 from Ags. I'm having a hard time thinking of a better burst combo than Lion and Ursa together. It's like... If you get caught, you're just, you're just dead. Like, there's nothing you can do about it's it. It's Lincoln's on Wushi. Huh? He actually he he built a Lincoln. He is getting the Lincoln. Okay. I mean, it, it's good to block either the raw or the grip, but I feel like there's a lot of single target abilities oh, in the arrow. Take Wushi, it out. He's almost dead. He wants this Aegis more to trigger, trigger on him. The healing was hit. He's healing him up pretty quickly. March Machines is making this easy as the rockets come in. Wushi, very low on life. So let's look at okay, what this Lincolns can do. Attack. It can block raw, it can block grip, which is awesome, but they can trigger it with laser, uh, nightmare, brain sap, and feeble. If he gets a point in feeble, which he actually has three of, that can block the Lincolns. I don't, I don't know how good that choice is, to be honest. I'm not sure I agree with it. We'll see how it plays out here, uh, here for Mushi. That was probably the last one I was expecting, to be honest, in yeah. this game. Um, but perhaps it proved eight, to be the right choice. 1830 Agonims on Jugger. Support Jugger. They're also looking at this ancient stack, just hoping they can mop it up quickly. There, yeah, here you go. Prophet's gonna come in. They're not gonna let Tinker have this. And Fushi just wants to go to town as well. They do have the, Yeah, they're gonna drop the level 2 healing board as well. That's a quad stack right there, which EG are losing. The arrow's gonna come up, but it flies right between the DK lineup. And what's, what's happening in return? Like, we got Arteezy forcing out the top lane. Also notice too what he's going. He's going for a four star. This is his second ability, his second item. He wants that dis distance between like Mushi and himself. I think it's still the Dagon. You think it's actually going to be a Dagon? It could be four star with that reasoning. It makes a lot of sense if someone gets hexed, he can pull them out. But I would have expected a null, a null talisman on him already if he was going to go. For That's a true. Dagon. Maybe he would have gone for the null. Then I guess he technically uh, or he usually does that. But I guess we'll have to see oh, for a TC. It's either it's either four or Dagon here. I, I don't see it being Agonims, even though that is a pretty cool item on Tinker now. It's it's still very rarely seen. Of course, what it does is gives laser twice the range, so 1100, which mm -hmm. is pretty sick. And you shoot four rock instead of two, but you can only hit every target once. So if you shoot four, it's on four individual targets. But yeah. It's a great item in some cases. I would love for Arteezy to use it in this game, but I, I don't know if it's good. I just love seeing it, but... we have. I don't think we've seen a single Axe and Tinker this whole tournament. Hasn't, hasn't happened in many, any of my games, man. So, yeah, no. So get a four there's staff one on four staff mask. already for for universe here, so maybe they just uh, they play the rack up on four staffs to uh, to create space. Arteezy, they're coming bottom lane. Jump, but moonlight shadow keeping him safe. Ah, uh, they they wanted ice ice ice. I think in that one, because yeah, PPD was waiting in the tree line to come out with the fiend script. One quick hold and then a TP in by Tinker if they have themselves a kill. But Mushi, Mr. Invis, Rune Walker. The hawks even coming. Like they've actually got uh, a Borg guarding middle lane. They got a hawk looking towards the bottom rune area. And then Ice 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 starts his army of treats. We kind of forget like that as well. Like Ice 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 is possibly one of the greatest prophets when it comes to scouting enemy jungles. Every single time he creates an army of trees, he knows how much power he's got himself to fight. Uh, Universe might be dead. Oh, Universe oh. might very well be dead. Is there another stun? Is there? He just he can buy a TP, but he never even got to use his four stuff then. Yeah. But caught out completely by surprise here from from Mushi. Very easy kill for him. How is he looking on that Lincolns? He will actually have it now. So 21 minute Lincolns for Mushi. He's got great farm. I mean the CS. The funny thing is, if you look at the last hits, it's just a Dagon. As yeah. far as net worth goes, Mushi is on top of the charts by very little. But in CS, he's far behind. It's just objectives right now that DK are are leading on five towers as well as two Roshans against one. the one tower of EG. Look at the positioning too, where Ice 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 TP into. That's normally where Tinker would move. So he could like hide himself in the trees and do much machines from. So Ice 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 is already getting himself in position so he could just orchid the ticket straight away. And there goes your tier 2 tower. That's all out of towers down 21 minutes 30 seconds in. 
And Lincoln's now picked up. We'll probably see some sort of rotation from DK to the bottom lane. The uh, the Aegis has expired shot? again, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So they didn't use the second Aegis, I believe. I don't think Mushi got caught out. That's so. just using him for money. That's it. It's, yeah. it's money and experience. It's just money. And of course now, the next one will probably lead to some sort of push since they'll have the cheese as well. But <laughs> they're going to have the cheese so early that there's like no hero who can really use it to the full effect. Apart from maybe Burning getting somewhat close to it at least with his 1600 health. Yeah, it'll be He's got eggs as well. It'll be Latham jumping. Again, it's like spin, ultimate, walk around. Ah, jeez, full life. Oh, wait. Yeah. It's one thing we haven't touched upon that much is that, you know, for EG's supports, they're playing a support Mirana and a support Bane, who can scale but really don't have any farm. Arcane Boots on, on the Bane, Mirana only has an urn. On DK's side, they have a support Juggernaut with an X Scepter and 1400 gold, so he's going to be a fourth core. Mm -hmm. And considering how much space they gave MMY, he's he's far ahead on the net worth of the other he's, supports. I mean, if you bring up the level net worth, two ultimate. they're actually out farming the offlaner with their position 5 right now. So, or the offlaner of EG, we should say. Ah. Universe on, uh, on Beastmaster. Very unusual for me to see a 23 minute game without Universe being involved in anything. He just can't find anything in this game on the Beast. Huh, apart from his own death. Well, that was yeah. the only thing he yeah. had up on oh, top lane. On that one. Yeah. Sorry guys, I just wanted something to happen. <laughs> action game, man. Okay. Bottom lane, they're Looks coming like down. DKRD PP looking for action. PPD is still waiting inside the trees. Like, they're, they're clapping to get rid of Hawks. But our TD is still going to cause a lot of problems for him. Like, he's still jumping around the map, keeping all the lanes split pushed out. So DK... And like, it was the Dagon. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, he, he bought the Dagon. Yeah. Like, if they want to try and stop, like, if they want to try and go for a death push up towards the high ground, like mass army of trees and everything else, and try and find kills, then DK need to push and push really, really quickly, because Arteezy will make them pay on the offlane. It's either that, or they hunt Arteezy. That's the other solution they have here. But we're noticing PPD, was that a gem? They, they started, yeah, there's a gem over on Beastmaster. Oh, oh they find him. I was about to say that Gan needs some really good vision to do it, but it looks like Ice 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 just keeping himself in and they've got RTC Look down. at DK's warding. They ward their own jungle at this point because they know this is where RTZ will go to farm after he pushes up the top lane. Really great preemptive warding here from uh, from DK. It's still up for another three and a half minutes, so I don't think we'll see RTZ going up there again for any anytime soon. And if he does, he's just going to get picked off. They are locking down Tinker's map, which is something Arteezy very rarely has happened to him, but EG cannot control this game right now. And they're in an awful position where they really just want to map control, which is what their lineup is best at, but they're getting outclassed in that by DK, and they cannot find a fight. Mm -hmm. DK will not let them fight unless if DK get the initiation, at which point I don't see EG winning any sort of fight right now. Arteezy is not big enough to make use of that Chronosphere to its full extent yet. They're going to try and battle top lane. Arteezy's TPing up right now, and it kind of feels like they're using him as bait. Now, Beastmaster gets rid of that Observe Ward, and they will realize how Arteezy got caught out before. But it's the smoke movement from Mason as well as PPD. Arteezy! And they find him again. Well, the Orc is there, but Ice 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 is committed to this. He's got Blink Dagger off cooldown, a six second sign, but he's in the corner at the moment. And Zai, arrow flies up, he's off target. They'll see him, but it's already too late. Rockets come down, it's the Chrono right now that got. Brewmaster takes the fall before he gets the Orc. Oh, knock this off, is and they huge got they even get more Dyer's MMY, that lead from Mason try to reach in deeper. Two big kills, including a gem. What an absolute big play here for EG and a tier 2 tower. And they're 10,000 gold down. This is just what they needed. Dyer's structures are fortified. And you're right, Arteezy actually ended up baiting that. It's a space creator. What? Dyer's Ice! Playing ROTK style. TP themselves directly and PPD with the brain step and attempted to TP out. But Finger of Death being committed by MMY. The only way they'd have enough damage to kill the Bane before the TP was completed. So they, they get at least they, at least wow, the revenge kill and they hold the tier two. two. That's that's pretty impressive. I thought that tower was gone for sure, but DK with only three heroes alive against five. They managed to get out and get the pick off with the uh, with Isis Isis TP and they still lost two big cores. Like the Brewmaster went down, now he's got Agony and Arcane Blink Dagger twenty six minutes in, so he's not too worried about money. Uh, but it's the fact that you also managed to bring down the Ursa. Ice 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 is in a precarious position. He's actually waiting. Third he, keep, he keeps sprouting. He waits for RTZ. He's standing here just to counterplay RTZ. He keeps sprouting the ground because he's like, okay, eventually RTZ will be boots of traveling in on this lane. Nope, he's going to find him up here. But RTZ. <laughs> he's on a hunting mission. Out in a hurry. He literally on, uh, <laughs> he's on a hunting mission. Ice 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 is going to need a hex to pull off these plays. But. 
As you said, the Roshan will once again be going to uh, Team Team DK here. Juggernaut picking up a Blink Dagger, so great positional ability from him. Who got the cheese? I guess they gave it, it to Bernie. Master. Yeah. The one thing DK cannot have happened to them is exactly what happened in the top lane. They cannot be opened on in that way so that Burning does not get ultimate off. It actually kind of doesn't matter what else happens as long as they get the Bruce split off. They can sacrifice pretty much any of their heroes now that Ursa has an Aegis in particular. As long as the Bruce split comes off, they'll get an advantageous fight for them. But then again, getting their Brewmaster split off seems to be getting more and more difficult as time goes by. Especially once Mason's able to pick up that Mjolnir, his damage output combining up with the Mask of Madness is really high. Top lane TP oh, coming cheesy. in from Arteezy and burning. Well, uh, instantly into the split there from DK. Oh, the stone. Yep, that can be disjointed. On the hunt, the Sprout is there. University be out, the Moonlight they... Shadow, he's just trying to hide in this for the moment. But the stone is out, and that's Arteezy locked in the corner. They trigger off the dust as well, so there really is nowhere to hide. They're back in towards the middle lane now. They're gonna jump on it on Mushi here. This should probably be a kill for Mason. It's only the Aegis though. And Mason does enough damage with the arrow, however, flying in. And time locks at the very last moment. They get the kill. Backtracks a little bit. Has to BKB and just TP out. No stuns to go through that. The Nightmare's over on Ice Ice Ice. And PPD, well, he'll die in the river. Mushi jumps out of it. So it costs him the Aegis anymore. At the same time, Arteezy, of course, he died up on the top lane. So DK have themselves a window of opportunity to push high ground. The Aegis may be gone, but they've still got a lot of power. Got 25 seconds to reach high ground, but Prophet, look at him! Look at him jump! Oh. He actually blinked himself the wrong way. If he reaches this, oh, that's Sprout almost. Initially, I think uh, he thought the leap would go back down towards the mid. DK and not put, west. could potentially get in here. The one problem they have is Primal splits on cooldown from 50. Tower is under attack. Yeah, they're gonna back out. It's not enough having the healing ward if you don't have the split. It's their main team fight ability that absolutely has to be available for high ground sieges five on five. And Mason, Mason is on top of, the, top of the charts. He's got a really good farm on his Void this game. 200 CS in a 28 minute game without Battle Fury is a really, really good farm by Void. It might be the best farm I've actually, or the highest CS I've seen on Void at this point. Just raw CS without having a, a Battle Fury. It's pretty pretty impressive from Mason here. Should point out too, uh, the Aegis Mall, once it was gone, they moved the cheese over the Mushi. So it's no longer there. Juggernaut, you got Arteezy! He's following Arteezy and the day got he Gosepts himself up to try and protect himself from Lanham, but the Gosept was way too late. This is an absolute nightmare for Arteezy. So, what, he he, he's try, one he tries four. to protect himself and Lion just nails him? I don't I don't think Arteezy is playing this poorly. This is just one of the lineups that it's so incredibly hard to play Tinker into because you have to play it like this. He can try Radiant's to be a little more cautious, but then he doesn't attack. find the farm. So he has to go for these constant TP split pushes. But each uh, sorry, DK just Ice 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 keeps sprouting the ground. <laughs> he gets so much flying vision from it. He can even spawn the nature's call if he if the sprout is a little bit off. To just get the vision on Arteezy and then, like you said, they can jump on him with Juggernaut, they can jump on him with Lion, mm -hmm. and he just dies. There's, there's like no way out. It's good that he has the Ghost Scepter against Jugger, but it's not enough. The Problem moment is he just like gets he, caught out, the, he, the he uses the Ghost Scepter against the Juggernaut, and if Lion tilt his ulti up, it's, it's like instant death. It's really the Hunger Games, honestly, for Arteezy here. Just that he, he gets to play them in multiple rounds, but EK have found the better weapons. Yeah. They're probably ready for this pickup as well from EG. Like our TZ Tinker is, is not a foreign pick to EG. DK, DK would have had to have a plan for it. They do have one big thing they're still going from, and that's the man who's got the highest net worth on the map. For a guy who is, what is this, five towers, four towers behind. He's still got a higher net worth than the Ursa and the Nature's Prophet, and that's also including three Roshans worth of gold and money too. Gold Mason is and still money. very big. <laughs> hmm? Gold and money is like twice as much. <laughs> and experience. You know, you know what I was saying! <laughs> <laughs> experience and knowledge. Okay, let's see mid lane burning. Is not gonna get caught out here. EG are really trying to find openings on the map, but it's it seems pretty hard for them to to find anything. This mid tower is their main objective. They just want to get a little bit of map control, but burning is in a great position here to blink in and open the fight. Uh some okay, I just got That's really weird. My announcer just gave its disconnect line, but no one DC'd. That's Okay, I thought one of the players DC'd, but they're they're all looking healthy, so absolutely yes, no problem. You're, you're fine. So that's that's relax, cool. relax and trust your eyes, not your ears. Now, that push on bottom lane, Mushi and the enemy, oh, I say push, it's the gang squad. They're a brute squad, two manning on that bottom lane, searching for, again, Arteezy. But Arteezy's sticking with the team this time around. 
Like he's waiting for this mid tower and they're just preparing themselves to, for a fight. Now, March Machines cover fire behind him will really be good to let off right now. At the same time, Rockets is hitting Ice Ice up on the cliff. Oh, and Mason they realize might be now. Yes, he will. Here comes. Oh my goodness. Mason he's backtracking. Done. He's about, he backtracked the figure of death, but it wasn't enough. The Sprout comes out too, but they're all backing up. The March Machines with Zuga DK walking entirely through it. Zai, the Dust will actually reveal him off, but he leaves himself into the tree line after you blind stomp by MMY to catch him out. They're all home and host. Really good disengage from EG on the losing Mason there, but they should have they should have expected this to happen. It might have actually happened the way they wanted it. They baited out five ultimates from DK here and only traded Mason for it. It's pretty obvious that Lion will be jumping in for that hex, and they don't have the counterplay potential. The moment he gets caught, he will die. But Mason tanked a hell of a lot too. Like, he he tanked the finger of death because he backtracked through a couple of those abilities. I, I, I'm not quite sure how DK won't want to push high ground. Without Split and up against March, even Axe is like, the Creep Wave will not be able to survive this. They'll do no damage towards the tower, and they're losing their side lanes. That was one March, and uh, okay, Ice 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 actually TP's top lane now. Also, look at this warding here from, uh, from Team DK. I don't know if you can see me drawing on the map. That's this okay, one. I can't do that. Excellent drawing, thank you. Okay, so they they got like yeah, you have you had a box on the map. You went you went for this region here. All right, my box was that's almost as awful as mine. But yeah, so they've they've placed their wards in this pattern, which covers the entirety of the enemy jungle, pretty much. It covers uh, inside the radiant jungle. It covers the area leading into the ancients, and it's basically just containing EG in their base. The only free space EG has is actually like this little region around the mid lane where DK will generally just be pushing the lane so there's like pretty much almost no opening for EG to get out on the map without using smoke and if they don't smoke they just get ganked like the pickoff yeah. potential for DK is amazing and, well we'll see if uh, you know it's it's kind of like the only way I see EG winning fights is by using Moonlight Shadow and catching DK by surprise but with the map on total lockdown it's very difficult for them to find any sort of opening because they all disappear from the map and they're into pushing in. It's incredibly obvious that the gank is coming and then DK won't get caught. This, this is what I talked about before. I mean, again. Uh, and I. Yeah. Has been Look denied. at the tree coverage. One, two, there's a third one over here. There was another one that was down here and there was actually another one up here around the rune point. You could have moved across the top. Like, there's still two wards there as well from DK, but. There, there is nowhere that EG can move without being flagged. And Ice 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 can be over aggressive in the lanes too. He could afford to fool me on you if he wants to, but he'll cost him his buyback. Throws the oldie out to start with. Now, bottom lane has to be dealt with by Tinker because it's pushing towards the tier Radiant's 3 tower with the catapult. Tower is under attack. So, DK have more space to farm. We go back to farming. Diffuser Blade's almost done for Lanham as well. I say almost. Like, he oh, yeah. still needs. Uh, yeah, he still needs recipe as well as the rope. That's a great, a really great pickup. Obviously, directly targeted at diffusal blading the Tinker's Ghost Scepter. And as of a couple versions ago, uh, Omni Slash doesn't stop when you hit uh, a Ghost Scepter target, or there's no other target in in range. He's just going to keep jumping. And since you can use items during Omni Slash, he can solo kill RTZ. He has no escape actually. There's no way in hell RTZ is getting out the moment he gets Omni Slashed. How many bounces does it have? currently has... On a, on a level 2? He's got nine. 9. He's got 9 jumps on the scepter. 9 jumps with the fusel. Yep, that's a dead tinker if he gets caught, so they have even more openings to, to kill Arteezy once that defusal blade is up. Then you won't even need help anymore. EG just searched for an opening. They used Moonlight, Shadow, and Hawk to try and scout out as they went into the dive side jungle. And there's Rogue. Yeah. Well, this time around, the Hawk's at least in position. For, uh, for EG. It just got pinged out though that it's there, and that's why Bernie's coming over, and funny enough that Hawk had like maybe two seconds yet left to live, Radiant's but middle tower is under attack. it's still just put down by Burning. And this is now going to be a time when EG can't let this happen again. This will be Aegis and two cheeses into the hands of DK. Because this, this is the fourth Roshan in 35 minutes. We're in a heart for Mushi now. They're building, they're just item building against the damage of EG. They want to just be able to soak up all the damage and go in. And having heart and cheese, if they don't kill Mushi in the first go, it's just going to jump in! Again. The oh. double jump! All oh, is perfect with the impal stun! Figure of death take out PPD! There was no luck there for Mason for backtracks. He went straight down. Marana set up in towards the air as well. They've got another jump as MMY. Hex is over on Zai, and then just drains out a little bit of mana. Three heroes down for EG. Roshan will be claimed by Lanham as well as Mushi. And there is no way that a split push can happen anywhere near fast enough to stop DK from even going high ground. 
Look at that, even catching at the hawk. Sprouts from my side sides. The amount of trees he has created. I think he probably made more sprouts than actual, like, like, triggers. Pull roots and run! In this game. This is such an impressive game from DK. They've completely controlled the flow from minute one. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And EG, with arguably one of their best lineups, are just being crushed. It's like DK wanted them to have these heroes. Yep. They were like, okay, we know what EG are gonna do. They love their Tinker Beast master combination. They love their early game with Marana Bane. We're just gonna draft a lineup that they can't fight into for the first 15 minutes. We're gonna take over the map, and then we're gonna drain it of resources. And then, when we feel like, we're gonna go high ground. And I size size is 6.1k gold. He hasn't finished his meal on ya, so I assume he's going for something else a little bit more special. And uh, well, I'm seeing an ultimate orb. So either he's considering mana style, or we're considering maybe, maybe this time it will be the Scardi. Maybe this time. An Aegis Prophet Scardi up against this lineup? Mm, I think it's a scythe. This is straight up hex. Yeah, then he can solo Arteezy as well. Shame. And they can hex the void in two ways. I think it's the better choice overall, I'm yeah. pretty sure. No. You're right, there it is, Scythe. Okay, something different, unique and unusual. Uh, Mushi back into farming, and EG, they're smoking up moving again. Now, this Hawk is having a bit of a look around, it'll see MMY, and it sees Mushi there. Universe, he roars over an MMY, and the Lion, he does get dropped down. There's a lot of damage coming out from Arteezy then, but the Blink Dagger went it's over. Collateral so time. Mushi's at the bottom, Mushi Chrono it, Chrono it! He's got a Chrono it on this one, if he doesn't, in comes the support, Ice Ice Ice, Mushi turns to fight. Now the Chrono, Mushi walks into the Chrono! He was on the outskirts of it, the Aegis he wanted to be lost, Ice Ice Ice, quickly killed off Arteezy, a lot of damage coming up there, the arrow, Mushi blinked out of it, Burning will now come in, goes for the split, Arteezy goes up and tries to protect him, but not fast enough, and Universe getting spun to death by Lanham, he's still got one ultimate left, they got the Void up in the air for the Moonlight Shadow, well, made him, there goes your jump from the Juggernaut, they'll bring him down, they did get some nice kills, they got the Aegis theme on with Mushi coming back to life again without getting Aaron when he came back up too. TK easily able to turn that around. Great play from EG though. I still think that was the kind of play they had to go for and they had to try to execute. They did everything right, but it just wasn't enough. They're 20,000 behind, they got the right target, they got the right opening, they got all their spells up correctly. Great play Mushi. from Mason to hold the Chrono Jump until he could find two. He needs more movement speed though. That's not going to be there. Arrow. Uh, for a fish? Nope. No one's biting. This is high ground time for DK, I think. They have enough time and they have, uh... They still have a cheese on the... on the broom. The glyph will have to be expended here by EG. No choice. Really no choice. They're at least trying to get these Enfeebles off. The Enfeebles will trick Lincoln's Fever before. And now the ball comes close to slowing down Lanham. There it goes again on the, uh... On the Lincoln Sphere, Void still on the sidelines for 13 seconds of PPD. Secondary and Feeble, the stun though again from MMY. Universe, four star down, but I think that Orchid might have enough damage. Yeah, it does. It's a double kill for Mr. Daryl, Ice Ice Ice. And they're gonna go to the wars of middle lane. There's a lot of damage still coming out from Arteezy, but they back themselves up. DK lose nothing. They claim two heroes and they claim the mid ranks. MMY is an absolute god on Lion. It's always such a pleasure to watch him playing this hero. All the way back to Dota 1, when Lion was actually a solo mid at one point, MMY is widely regarded as, in that era, when he was playing that, he was the best Lion and the best Storm Spirit in mid. Absolutely phenomenal player. Even Tinker, he was exceptionally good with in that mid lane. And his experience has just carried over into Dota 2. I, I think if I had to choose... You know, if I had to highlight one player for his line play, I would keep coming down to this guy. And in this game, we're just seeing it. He's been part of 13 kills. He's 4-1-9. and nine. He keeps finding the dagger into double impales. Perfect hex timings every time. And I love to see that, you know, this is something that generally competitive players are good at this, but sometimes they don't do it. It's, it's something for <laughs> a little bit of teaching for pub players here. Use yeah. the finger of death immediately. Don't save it for the KS. Just use it. Get the kill immediately. He jumps in head. He instantly fingers every time after the impale because he knows there's no point in saving it. Yep. Immediately gets it off. Sometimes in other competitive uh, in other competitive matches, the lions are holding on to the finger because like, do I really need it? Should I use it? I could save it for another kill. And then the counterplay potential comes out. MMY don't let them. They don't even let. He doesn't let them blink. They just die. Yep. And there's gonna be even more death. The diffuser blade is finally. I guess fi let him bought that thing like five minutes ago. It's only just coming out in the courier to him now. Uh, but I, I, I was watching him looking for Arteezy again. 
Guys, we're going to push in bottom lane, so everyone's on bottom lane, and all of EG have to come back. So we're trying to look for a trade-off on the tier 2 tower in the top lane. Again, Sprout fishing onto the sidelines, looking for this Tinker, but Arteezy, he's just walking himself in with the march to the machines. He's also got that level 3 Dagon. But no E-Blade. Hey, take that one back. E-Blade's now arrived. This might be Arteezy's latest E-Blade in this tournament on Tinker. 41 minutes in. He still has about 300 CS. I mean, he's been getting the farm, but... Objective-wise, EG have only managed to claim four towers and none of the four Roshans. Uh, Arteza has got three kills, which is very, very low for him as well. And uh, again, coming back to the map control. I don't think you can fault EG for this. I don't think EG has played a bad game. They've just been outclassed and the strategy from DK was just perfectly executed. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see DK in great shape because we were starting to worry about, okay, are they actually just going to completely mess up at this event? They yeah. are one of the favorites coming in. It would be a shame to see them just getting knocked out early or underperforming. But since Lanham took over drafting, we've seen some really good games from DK with creative drafting and, and some great ideas. And yeah. And who would have thought like, good right Juggernaut now. will be a thing in this and tournament? And EG, even with a loss here, they're still going to be okay. And they've been looking great the whole tournament through. They're, they're oh, still yeah. looking very comfortable with a 10 and 4 score should they lose this game. They're coming up for a gank right now. So Moonlight Shadow again being used. The D room from Mason was taken and it was pinged. It was pinged. The Observer Ward was able to scout it out. Actually, was there an Observer Ward from them? No, there actually wasn't. There was definitely a ping saying they're in this neighborhood. And that's why you're seeing MMY and Burning just backing up a little bit further. And the trees from Mr. Ice 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 scouting out again. Uh oh, Ice. So good, uh -oh. but where? No, Ice don't walk up the hill. Oh, Raw, they got the one more attack. The laser from Tinker will get the kill, but Burning jumps in. Mason low on life. Has it got the corner there? Force upping away from Nushi on a double force up to make it happen. Now the Juggernaut Ultimate will take out the BBT. The Beast must be drained out. Arteezy has no mana left. This is GG. They've lost too many people here. They'll just push down the middle lane and should end this now. I can definitely get a second lane of Rex here. Arteezy won't have buybacks since he just bought the E-Blade. They can buy back the Void as the only hero, I think. Maybe Beastmaster does barely have the gold uh, for Zai, it. Courier sniping. Uh, or at least attempting it. He's a long way from home, man. He's running and into I, my And I, I, like, Go Scepter, save me, protect me. Oh! Ah, yeah, I, that's He's just taunting him, he just runs in like a little bit of a circle first before getting the last in off. I said, What the fucking thing? He, he has to wait for the ghost. He has to wait for the ghost. No, no, center. it breaks when you use TP. Uh, the only the only TP that doesn't break, or, well, you don't break Ghost after with Boots of Travel, but with Temple and Scroll you do. So the moment he started TPing out, he just got attacked twice, but I said, I just. A little bit of a stutter step first, then. The last fight now for EG. This is the last end without Arteezy. It's going to be a jump into a Chrono, and now it's going to be Burning jumping in, and again they got Mason. Four staff down once, and they kill him off. That's the second fight in a row where there's been no Chrono, and the GG call comes out from Arteezy. Zai is going to take the Juggernaut into the face, and Manum, well, he walks himself, in fact, blinks himself away to safety. Commanding performance from DK. Commanding, commanding performance by DK. I think this is one of the mo most well-executed games I've seen in the tournament so far. Just from start to finish, DK, excellent control of the game. The whole flow, their decision-making, their movement, considering what they're playing against, the fact that they died eight heroes in this game is pretty pretty remarkable, right? There's so much pickoff potential on EG, they've got great amounts of burst. They got the farm, like Void and Tinker have great farm. DK not giving them an inch of space in this game. Very